If I asked you who was the greatest United club captain, you'd probably say Robbo or Kino, maybe Martin Buchan, or if you go back far enough, Johnny Carey. But how many of you would have had Charlie Roberts in your head? Who? Charlie Roberts. He won as many major trophies as Carey and Buchan combined, and as many league titles as Captain Marvel. So why not get to know a true United legend? Find out more about United's first great club captain, Charlie Roberts. Before I begin, I want to give a special mention to Leslie Millman who kindly provided me with a vast majority of images you'll see in this video from his own extensive and impressive personal United collection of memorabilia. After this video, click on the link in the description to his Flickr account. Charles Roberts was born on the 6th of April 1883 when Manchester United was still called Newton Heath and had only been going for five years. The youngster was part of a football family as his cousin Harry Hooper played for Southampton and Leicester amongst others. It's also quite fitting, therefore, that his great-great-granddaughter Lucy Roberts was part of the inaugural Manchester United ladies squad. Hailing from Darlington, England, Charlie cut his teeth playing for Darlington St Augustine's and Bishop Auckland before moving to Grimsby Town in 1903. Comfortable at either centre-half or half-back, the North East lad soon impressed and after just a season on the East Coast, Manchester United paid a handsome fee of £600 for the stalwart defender. Tall and well built, Roberts also had a free roaming maverick style in his years at United. He tackled, placed and controlled the ball with exceptional ability and became an inspirational captain of United's first great team in the first pre-World War era. Roberts was a strong and outstanding attacking halfback with tremendous stamina, who had a great turn of pace and could run the 100 yard dash in just 11 seconds. As well as a leader of many had plenty of skill, so much so that Vittorio Pozzo, the genius Italian coach who led Italy to two World Cups in 1934 and 38, is said to have based his sides and their subsequent successes on Robert's style of play. However, Charlie's first job was to help his new club out of the second division, where it had been languishing for most of its brief league existence at that time. In 0304, Robert's first season at the club, and under the new stewardship of Ernest Magnol, Manchester United, who had been reformed under this name a couple of years previously, came third, missing out on promotion by a point to Woolwich Arsenal. Magnol was moving the club in the right direction and Charlie would be an integral part. Another third place followed and then the Darlington lad earned the captaincy, aged just 22 at the beginning of the 0506 campaign. He immediately led the boys to promotion to the first division as runners up to Bristol City. Charlie picked up his three England caps in 1905, becoming Manchester United's first England international. These would be the only ones he'd earned as his involvement in the players union later on in his career came with consequences and he'd be overlooked despite his destiny of him going to be one of the most successful club captains of the era. Anyway back to club football and United needed to improve their mediocre side if they were going to keep its place in the top flight never mind anything else. Fortunately across Manchester our city rivals stank of corruption and the bribery scandal that followed saw a slew of players implicated and their successful side broken up. United boss Magnol was quick to pounce upon the opportunity, snagging left-back Herbert Burgess, inside right Jimmy Bannister, legendary inside forward Sandy Turnbull, but the biggest coup was Welsh wizard Billy Meredith, who along with Roberts would be key to the club's success over the next five years. United's first major piece of silverware in its history was lifted by Charlie Roberts in 1908, as his side romped the first division title by a massive nine points. Remember, two points for a win back in those days. Then the winning of the inaugural FA Charity Shield followed against Southern League winners QPR. A one-all draw saw the match replayed to a convincing 4-0 win at Stamford Bridge. However, FA Cup success was to be the measure of how far United had come in those days. The boys made the 1909 final its first against Bristol City. Charlie captained the side and was also crucial in a pre-match decision. Match winner and legendary striker Sandy Turnbull was carrying an injury and the manager came to Roberts personally to ask his advice. The club captain endorsed Turnbull's plea to play, stating, Turnbull might get a goal and if he does we can afford to carry him. The face shown by the captain and the manager was rewarded as Sandy Turnbull himself scored the only goal of the game after 22 minutes. Charlie Roberts collected the cup in the club's maiden triumph in the competition. After trophyless following season, another league title beckoned in 1910-11 by a point from Aston Villa and this was again followed by a charity shield success. This time a record 8-4 win over Swindon Town, with Harold House netting 6. That fifth piece of silverware for United would be the last one that Charlie Roberts would get his hands on, and the last the club would get for 37 years. Charlie's time at United was almost up, but he had another passion, forming a players' union, known as the AFPU, the Association Football Players' Union. 
Along with Billy Meredith, who was from a Welsh working class mining background, he saw the benefit of protecting players' rights who were earning a pittance at the time. You can also catch Billy Meredith's United Legends video that I did by clicking on the link in the description. The first union meeting was held in 1907 and this not only hurt the FA no end, but also the media who tried to whip up support against Roberts, Meredith and other revolutionaries. Amongst the union's aims were to remove the restrictions in transfers and the wage cap of just £4 a week, as well as trying to get the players a further benefit so they could earn a fee from transfers. Meanwhile, the FA demanded allegiance to their organisation and that all players leave the AFPU. Intimidated, the rest of the clubs and players in the country slinked away, but Manchester United suspended its players who were standing alone. The club had to cancel its first fixture of the 1909-10 season against Bradford as they couldn't field a team. By the 1st of September, players were reinstated, but played their fixture wearing AFPU armbands. Desperate, the FA called a meeting with more than 200 professionals attending. United's players were excluded. Charlie Roberts coined the name Outcasts FC to describe how they were treated. However, the pressure worked from United's players led by Roberts and Meredith, and only after some last gasp support from Everton's Tim Coleman for the Outcasts did the FA relent, finally legitimising and recognising the Association Football Players Union. The personal consequences were hard though, as Roberts would not play for England again, and United punished his insurrection by not providing a benefit match for a decade's worth of service which was worth at least £500, a lot of money back in the day. With United on the wane and after more than 300 matches, most as skipper, and 23 goals over a decade's worth of play, Charlie Roberts was moved on to Oldham for a then record fee of £1,500. He played for the Latics until the English football programme was suspended for the Great War in 1915. Roberts would go on to manage Oldham post-war from 1921 to 22. After Oldham, Roberts established a wholesale tobacconist business in Manchester. He created a cigarette which he called the Duke Rebel after the Manchester United half-back line of Dick Duckworth, Charlie Roberts and Alec Bell, which was famous around the city. Charlie also went on to be part of the coaching staff at newly formed Manchester Central with old teammate Billy Meredith. However, this venture didn't last long as United and City felt that a third Manchester League club could be harmful to them and so vetoed their application to the Football League on several occasions. Charlie Roberts passed away at just 56 on the 7th of August 1939. He'd been suffering from dizzy spells and didn't survive the subsequent cranial operation that the doctors felt he needed. Apart from his five major trophies he won at United, he was inducted to the English Football Hall of Fame in 2017. So that was the life of not only a legendary United halfback, but also club captain. Now that you know more about this groundbreaking man, how do you rate him as a skipper in the club's history? Please post your comments below and like, share and subscribe. Thank you as always for your support.